there's gold, and then there are hills. Let's go see if we can find it. I'm going into the bins first. Uh, they just opened about an hour ago, so there should be some good stuff in here. They're out of bins today, so I just have a bag carrying around with me. Usually what I do is just go up and down each aisle looking for you know anything that catches my attention. Um, you know, just, just one time. And once I made it through all the aisles, then I'll go back and dig a little bit deeper. Oh, astronaut helmet. That's pretty cool. I'm not gonna get it, but still pretty cool. This is cool. Aztec pattern. Ooh, Wrangler. I'll go ahead and pick that up. These are in very good condition. Hmm. I'll get those too. So I didn't see much on the first go around. So I'm gonna start at the beginning and dig a little deeper. Missing a back, but still be pretty good. This is in pretty good condition. New bright. I'll get that. Oh, this is a Kiwi horsehair brush. You can use this to like clean shoes and stuff. Foreign Polo Performance shirt, so that's 2XL. There's a little stain right there, but I think I can get that out. Everything else looks good. Yeah. Take a chance on this. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay. I'm out of here. Alright, so I'm done with the bins. I spent a total of $16.68 in there. I'm gonna go put all this stuff in the truck and then I'll go back to the regular retail store. B, whatever that is. Whatever car this is for, this is worth a good amount of money. And I want $6.92 for the whole set. 
I'll take it. Oh, Hearth and Hand Magnolia Candle, four fifty. Same candle, five fifty. I'll get this one. This is already sold, but still a cool piece. How you doing? Good. Yeah. The only thing I got in there were those car mats and that candle. And the candle was for me. Sizes like candles. Uh, I spent a total of $11.42. So not too bad. The set of four car mats should do pretty well. I, I would think I should be able to get about 80 to maybe 100 bucks for those. So uh, good, good day so far. Let's go to one more Goodwill. Rodeo, or Pearl Snap, Pearl Snap Paisley shirt. That's pretty cool. It's a nice Tommy jeans sweater. A little logo on the back, but the collar looks a little, a little stretched out. Uh, and it's not vintage or anything. I don't think made in Mexico, uh, so I'll probably pass. So the only thing I got in that Goodwill was this men's cowboy pearl snap shirt. Uh, it was $4.75 and I can probably get like 20 to 25 bucks for it. So I'm going to head home now and if you remember I talked about that fabric in Goodwill and I said I had a project for that. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So I got this chair at Goodwill uh, maybe about a year and a half ago. I used to flip furniture if you were not aware. When I bought this chair it had a very ugly cushion cover on it. It was like a mustard yellow or something so I found this fabric it's like gray with little white triangles on it I found it at Hobby Lobby paid like four dollars for a yard and reupholstered the chair and it looks better than the mustard but it still it just doesn't look good you know the chair has really solid bones but the the I just couldn't find a good fabric to go with it also I'd like to mention that I have sanded and stained and refurbished this chair but Moe's when he was a puppy he likes to chew on furniture legs so it needs to be you know sanded and stained again but it's a very very solid like mid-century chair so i've been looking for a type of navajo or aztec fabric pattern that i could replace this with because i feel like that would look pretty good with this style of chair and then today luckily i found this bad mamma jamma uh it's not too big but i think it's the perfect size to be able to get a new cushion out of it so I'm gonna try to cut some out and uh, see if we can't reupholster this bad boy. Most of the time reupholstering a chair is really easy. It just depends on the chair. For this one in particular, it just has four screws you have to unscrew. All are flat heads and it's just one in each, each uh, corner. Easy peasy, this whole thing comes off and then I didn't do a very good job the first time, but literally you just cut the fabric into the shape of a square and you wrap it around the back and staple it into the wood. I just realized I don't have a stapler anymore. My old one broke and I never bought a new one, but I still wanna cut out some fabric and just put it over it just to temporarily see what it would look like with our new fabric. If you're working with a solid piece of fabric, like a solid color, it's a lot easier, but when you're working with a pattern piece, you wanna make sure that it looks good when it's on there. So you can't just go all willy nilly and just upholster however you want to. So I'm trying to Line this up to where this little design here is going to be in the middle of the cushion and these two are going to be on the edges. So you can see I need to push it over a little bit more. But once we have it lined up, we're just going to cut out, you know, maybe about four or five inches around each side and then work on upholstering it. Okay, so... There, there it goes. That's a, that's a brief mock-up of what it would look like. It's just held together with nails right now, but I can go back and staple it. And uh, for a first draft, I mean, it looks pretty good. Let's put it on the chair and see how it looks. It's not going all the way on there because of the nails, but that'll just give you an idea of what it looks like. I like it better than the, uh, you know, just the gray fabric with the white triangles. It just looks more, it's just more funky, I guess, like a mid-century funk chair. And also have a good amount of fabric left over, so there would be enough to do another chair, you know, if I had another chair. Um, or I could just sell this on eBay because I was looking on eBay for fabric to reupholster this chair with and I could not find any. So this is a pretty good, uh, pretty good fabric, I think. So I maybe could get 
you know, five, 10 bucks for it on eBay. But this gets me thinking about how to kind of use creativity in your reselling business to maximize profits. And I have two more examples of this. So a couple months ago at the bins, I found a vintage transformer like bed comforter. It was a weird size. It looked to be like in between a, a twin and a full. I don't know. It, it looked to be like maybe altered at some point. It was in really good condition considering the year. It was actually made in 1984. And I knew this because it had the date printed on the comforter multiple times. I only paid $4 for this comforter. So I knew there was money to be made, but I didn't want to just sell it outright. I wanted to try to be creative with it. Fabric was in really good condition and it had the date printed on the comforter seven times. So I thought maybe I could make throw pillows out of it, but I didn't know how to make throw pillows. <laughs> One post on my neighborhood Facebook group and I met a lady in my neighborhood who does sewing and alterations for a living. I told her I had a vintage transformer comforter. I wanted her to try to make throw pillows out of it. She said she could definitely do that. I took the comforter to her house, dropped it off. It took about three weeks, I guess, but she eventually you know, cut it up into pieces and made 10 throw pillows from it. Here are four of them. Now, the, the whole blanket, like I said, was in really good condition, but there were some areas that were a little, little bit more worn than others, like a little bit faded there. Uh, but you can see, like, this one's probably my favorite one. You can see the date, 1984. She just made pillowcase covers. She didn't make, it didn't come with the actual pillows. I had to order these separately. So I have 10 of these pillowcase covers. Now, I've got to pair them up and get them into sets that look good together because I want each set to have at least one of these dates. You see there's a date there. There's a date there. There's a date on that one. Um, this one, this one has a date on the side here. So I want each pair of pillows to have a date because if somebody buys these as like vintage transformer pillows, uh, I want them to be able to prove it to their friends by showing the date on the fabric. Now, like I said, I could have sold the comforter as is for maybe like 40 bucks or so, but because I got a little creative with my thinking and, and you know invested a little bit of time and money into a new altered product, I guess, I've also potentially made more money. Instead of making just $40 on the comforter, if I sell each pair of pillows for say 50 bucks or so, like maybe like $59.99 with free shipping or so, so netting about 50 after fees and everything. So I have 10 pillows, that's five pairs, about $25 in profit on each pair. So that's $125 in profit instead of the 40. And I didn't do any extra work, I, I outsourced it. You know, I paid, I supported another woman in my neighborhood in her small business and almost tripled my, my return on investment. And I don't know about you guys, but I personally think a bunch of cool transformer throw pillows, vintage transformer throw pillows, are cooler than just a, a comforter that would be used on some kid's bed, I guess. And I'm sure there's somebody out there that's gonna say, there's no way I'm gonna get $60 per pair of these pillowcase covers, but you have to think that you can't just buy this fabric. This fabric is from 1984. It's 30, 34, 30, 33, 30, over 30 years old and still in pretty decent condition considering. Like I said, this one's a little bit faded, but I just, I think these look so cool. I actually have 11 pillows, but I'm keeping one of them. So I only have 10 available for sale. Um, but it's just I, I, creativity. So the other day at the bins, I found this weird Ottoman men's like, it was like an Ottoman at the bottom and then it had like a long back and it was like you put suits on it or something. It was like rusty and falling apart and it just wasn't really worth anything. However, given my history in flipping furniture, I knew that one part of this piece of furniture was worth something. And that part is the legs. I saw these legs and I knew they would screw off and I knew they would sell for a good amount of money. These legs are handmade in Yugoslavia. You can kind of, but made in Yugoslavia. They're made out of walnut. I'm 99% sure they just thread on. You can buy the female receiving end of for this thread at Home Depot, like a four pack for probably like 10 bucks. So if you wanna hand make like an ottoman or if you have a vintage piece of furniture that you just wanna make look more mid-century and not so antique, you can take the legs off and put fancier, you know, tapered wooden legs like this on. I've sold sets of these legs before in the past, anywhere from $25 a set all the way up to $50 a set. Given that these are a little bit longer, I'd say these are maybe like eight inches long, I think I'm gonna ask $49.99 free shipping for these and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get it. Again, these were on a piece of furniture that everybody else was overlooking because the piece of furniture as a whole wasn't worth anything. Having the knowledge of the furniture flipping and, and what's in style nowadays helped me see the value in what everybody else was overlooking. The ability to see the value in things other people can't is the number one quality of a successful reseller. Somebody should tweet that. Get creative, think outside the box, maximize profits, and edge out the competition. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. You're the best, and I'll see you guys on the next one.